Okay, so you probably recognize this pig diagram from the, from the picture in the slides. Um, I want to point out that in the lab, you guys are going to be measuring the length of the string here. <clears throat> and you're going to be measuring the diameter of this circle. But the math that we used to solve these guys in the, uh, from the theory involves the radius. So the radius of the circle is, of course, going to be half the diameter. So pay attention to that. When you measure the diameter, recognize that the radius of the circle is actually going to be half that. Um, the other thing we should note is that if you know the radius of the circle and you know the length, of course, you can work out the angle theta. So it's oftentimes convenient to, to work with the angle theta than, more so than it is to, uh, to work with the radius of the circle and the length of the string. So let's, uh, what I want to focus on in this example is simply the free body diagram of the darn pig. So let's take the pig and let's think about what forces are acting. Of course, it's got weight, which is going to be the weight, the force of the earth acting on the pig. And then it's also going to have a tension in the string that connects it to the ceiling. That's the tension of the string acting on the pig. And really, that's it. Now, the other thing you can notice from geometry is that this angle theta and this angle theta happen to be exactly the same angle. So we can simply write the momentum principle as the dp dt is equal to the sum of these two forces, the tension plus the weight. But as we've done in the other cases, it's convenient to break this guy up into x and y components. So let's go ahead and do that. And as also been my habit, I'm going to scrunch this up a little bit because it's too much and make use of the space a little better. So. Let's write out the x component of dp dt and the y component of dp dt. The x component, of course, just says dpx dt is equal to the x component of the tension, which I think you can see is the tension force times the sine of theta. And uh, there's nothing else. The weight force has no x component, so that's the only game in town. Let's look at the y component of dp dt. Now, there's two folks, there's two forces that have y components. The tension has a y component, t times the cosine of theta. And, of course, the weight has a y component, which is downward, which is minus mg. Now, in the y direction, there's nothing happening. The pig is not going up or down. It's not changing its y component of momentum. So I can replace this guy with a zero. In other words, these guys add up to zero. But in the x direction, the pig's moving in a circle. In the picture on the left, you can see that at that moment, which is where I have the free body diagram, at that moment, the direction toward the center of the circle is to the right. So just like we did with the uh, merry-go-round, this is going to end up being mv squared over r. But in this case, because of the, where we've drawn the diagram and the moment in time we chose to draw the free body diagram, um, that's going to be a positive mv squared over r. So really, I end up with two equations. I end up with mv squared over r is equal to t times the sine of theta. And I end up with mg is equal to t times the cosine of theta. <coughs> and so you can see that if, uh, if I take the ratio of these two guys, I'm going to get v squared over rg. That's going to be equal to the tangent of theta. So there you have it.